Good morning and welcome to another video. I'm parked on the edge of Dartmoor where I'm picking up this morning. It should have been a really, really quiet night where I'm parked up to, but it rained and it was so windy and rainy last night. It rocked the cab around and when it rains that hard, it's like sleeping in a conservatory. So I haven't had that much sleep. So I'm gonna get up. Get ready, have my cup of tea, make myself feel better. And where I'm loading to is about 10 minutes away. Once I'm up, ready and sorted for the day, I can go and do my daily checks. And enjoy the nice views that I've got this morning, even if it is miserable weather. One thing that I'm doing just before I leave is lifting my body up a little bit just so that I can get all the water that's uh, sat on the sheet overnight from the rain off the sheet and then I can put it down while I'm filling out my daily checkbook. When the water sits on the sheet it can bend the central bar and then it makes it awkward uh, to take the sheet off and put it back on again and it can hold you up so it's better just to get the water off the sheet. Right, that's that, I'm ready to go. I can't actually show you a lot about where I'm loading because they don't like people filming in there, but I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna load some sand and I'm going to Sandy again. And I don't actually know where I'm going after that. So it's gonna be a bit of a magical mystery tour. So I'm guessing it's gonna be over in that Sandy area or like an hour, within an hour from Sandy that I'll be picking up my next load, but who knows? Right, so I am in here now. There was a massive, massive queue. I've never seen a queue like it. It must have been about 20 lorries in front of me. So they must have a big job on somewhere like a boat or a big roadwork sort of thing going on today. Um, so it's taken me an hour to weigh in. It's now eight o'clock. When I got to the weigh bridge, <laughs> the chap's mouse broke down. Like as in like on the computer, it ran out of battery. So I had to go hunting for a new battery. Normally it's, a lady called Sue in there and she's like really good she knows everything on how to do everything she's like a well-oiled machine but he was a bit sort of out of his depth he couldn't find my order number so he had to ring somebody and yeah so now I have pulled around and I've got on the wash because we need to wash out here before we load and the wash has run out of water so I have to wait until it fills back up again so that I can wash out to be honest, I wish that everywhere had a washout like this or everywhere like this had a washout because people expect you to clean the trailer out in between loads, which is completely fair. And if you're ordering something, people like it being brought in clean. But a lot of places don't actually like you to clean your trailer out on their site. So after you've tipped their product, they don't like you getting in the back of your wagon to sweep it out or wash it out I never understand it because they want their product brought in clean, but they do not want you to clean out for somebody else. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I think there should definitely be designated cleaning out areas in every place that you load and tip. And now I am 200 kilos over, which they won't let us out overweight so i need to chip off 200 kilos so i need to get all my orange gear back on that i've literally just taken off because i thought you know normally they are spot on in here and i've probably been in here like a hundred times and i've probably chipped off once or twice so i was just being overconfident and finally i am out of there loaded and ready to go i was in there for nearly two hours in the end, um, which is very unusual. Normally you're quick in, loaded and out. So yeah, it's one of those things that's just happened this morning, but very unusual. I wasn't expecting it. I don't know what I've got next. So I don't know if it's gonna affect me later on or not. So we'll just go with it and see. As we go past Tiverton, we see some snow and it starts snowing quite heavily. A 
As I'm driving along, my near side windscreen wiper breaks, so I pull into the services and attempt to fix it. It seems to have just popped out, but I secure it with a cable tie just in case. I also need a drop of fuel, but the service station that I've pulled into has no fuel at the moment, so I pull into the next services. Went in to pay for the fuel and the, um, the till breakdown. So I think I'm gonna have a bit of a day of it today. And then my other windscreen wiper broke. So I'm guessing it's the weight of the snow that the windscreen wipers don't like. So I pulled into a lay-by and sorted it out. I'm not going to make it to Sandy in one from Plymouth, so I'm going to stop for my break, have some porridge because I didn't have that this morning. I just had some nibbles and probably make a cup of tea and then we can get on to Sandy. I've just checked and I'm about an hour and 45 minutes away, so I would have liked to have been a bit further on than that, but along the way, it went down to like 40 or 50 miles an hour on the motorway where there's snow and stuff like that. So, you know, it's gonna take me a bit longer today. My main aim is to get the truck back to the yard in one piece because damage on the truck is gonna cost more than being late for a delivery. That's that then, so onwards to Sandy. Yeah. And then it's round all those wonderful roundabouts at Milton Keynes. So all the vertical roads running north to south are called streets, and all the horizontal roads running west to east are called ways. When I get to Sandy, I'm straight on to tip. I was quite surprised considering the day I was having already. Luckily, this is a tailboard tip, so it won't take me long to tip and sweep out. This time it's quite a coarse sand and it doesn't take too long to sweep out. And yay, that's one load done. I now just need to find out what I'm doing next. Hi, Gemma. Hello, all right. How's it going? Um, I've just tipped at... Uh, Sandy. Sandy. Take it easy, you've got to get me that snow on it. Yeah. I just spoke to Sandy up north, they said it's coming in, it looks like it's getting wet up there, so... Yeah, just be I careful when you get there, right? I mean. So, I've just rung the office and I am doing a real creamy job and I never ever get this job. I don't think I've done this job for at least a year, but I am literally, I have got the cream. Yes, I got the cream. I get the details through on my work and I use my phone on Google Maps to look up the farm before ringing the farmer for exact directions. Hello, is this uh, it's Gemma from Wayne's Transport. I'm coming to collect some milling oats from you. Okay. Um, I should be over to you about half past five-ish if that's okay. I'm just that's over five, in Sandy yeah. now. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Okay, bye, bye. Bye. Then I fill out my paperwork and make it over to the farm. Pass that over with, right. Let's go. Oh. Yes! Creamy, creamy, creamy. Ha, ha, ha. I've got the cream. I've got the cream. I've got the cream. I have got the cream. Yes! The open. No, it's not. That means I have to go the other way. This is exit, that's not actually the exit, we've got to go this way. And then it's back round those lovely roundabouts at Milton Keynes, but it's a lot easier being empty.
Um, I'm just gonna have to sit here and wait for a minute. And I am over, well, 20 minutes early, so might as well stick it on break for a bit. It's still snowing. Um, apparently it's gonna get a bit worse. So I'm taking, picking up a load of oats here and taking it to just off of Junction 16 on the M5. It's quite cold. Right, so I'm backing up there. So what I might do is move back a bit, spin round, and then do a bit of a do a bit of a slide. He's just got to move some machinery out of the way before he can load, so I'm not going to take my sheet off until he's ready for me because it is quite snowy and wet out there, so I don't want the body of the trailer getting wet and the oats will stick to it. I was tr trying to miss on this side with the trailer that's there. Once we start loading, I realise that it's going to take a while because his bucket is only carrying about three quarters of a ton and I need 28 tonnes. As I'm loading, the snow is starting to get heavier. Oats are a lot lighter than some other grains that we carry like wheat and barley. So sometimes it is a struggle to get them on the trailer. At this point, I need to get another about five and a half tonnes on the trailer. I'm going to give it a bit of a shunt, try and flatten the oats out. It's very hard because it's very slippery. When I shunt, it flattens the oats out into the corners and makes more room inside the trailer to load. 24 and a half now. So I'm going to move forward. So actually I'm going to get up and also check the load and just see how, how it's doing up there. Yeah. So there's a bit of space at the back there. Still three and a half ton to go. I've also spotted a tidy row of Scania's behind the truck. I reckon they must all have an early finish. Oh my god, it's cold. So cold. Come on, come on. Getting really high again now, so I'm just going to give it another shove back and forwards. Try not to slip on the snow. It's not ideal doing this but it means getting the load on. I'm starting to wonder whether we will actually get my full weight on. And then on the last bucket, the loader breaks down. Luckily, the farmer knows what he's doing and fixes it. Just as I put my hand up to say it's full, the grain comes over the side. So it's safe to say that it's full. The oats only just fit on the trailer. I had a bit of a struggle putting the sheet on and I didn't get it on camera, but I shunt it up and down. You had to come underneath with the loader bucket, just so that when I put the sheet on, it tried to catch it in the loader bucket. Then we had to do a bit of sweeping up and shoveling up into the loader bucket, which is not the best in this weather. Then we went round the corner to get the passport and the sticker that goes on the passport, which is a red tractor assurance sticker, is out of date. It's one of the important things that anyone on a way bridge will check. So I said, well, there's no point me going to 
I'm better off waiting for somebody to bring a new sticker. The chap that loaded me, it's not his grain. He's just come to load it as a favor for somebody else. So now the farmer whose grain it is has to come and bring the sticker to me. If I got up to where I'm tipping tomorrow and they realized that the sticker was out of date, I might have to wait there until he brought the new sticker there. So it's better for me to wait here for half an hour than to wait up where I'm tipping for like two and a half, three hours. This seems to be getting worse. So I could do with getting on a bit really. And I still haven't had a shower or had my tea and it's now 20 to seven. And I have got until quarter past nine. Oh yeah. We have got the sticker. Once I've got the sticker, I can make my way towards the place where I'm tipping tomorrow. If I could have made it, I could have parked on site. But for now, I'm just going to have to try and get as far as I can. And for the third time today, back round those roundabouts at Milton Keynes. Well, that's me parked up with six minutes to spare and I didn't get a shower because it was either getting to a place where I could park in my legally allowed time or stopping for a shower. So I'm gonna to have to have a wash in my bowl and hopefully get a shower tomorrow. The snow seems to have stopped. So to be honest, the road's been fine. I keep saying there's heavy snow forecasts, but I don't know. Looks alright to me. I suppose we just have to wait and see in the morning. I am absolutely starving now, so I am going to have my tea. Because it's nearly half past nine and I'm hungry. Homemade in a slow cooker. Sausage casserole. Yum yum. I've been looking forward to this for hours, so oh, it's just nice to blim in, relax after today. Well, all in all, I've had a bit of a day of it today, being held up and different things that's happened that's kind of just gone against me all day, but sometimes it happens like that. But I know one thing, I am so glad to be parked up and I can have my tea. I've been waiting for this for hours now. I am going to really, really enjoy this. Mm. That's good. By the time I had my tea and I had a wash, it's now about half past 10. I am about half an hour away from where I need to be in the morning. So I'm going to get my head down and get over there first thing. Quite interested to see what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. And I wake up to the torrential snow that we had last night. 